Good day, everybody. Hope this video finds you well. And before I start video two of my Learn to Survive series, I want to answer a question that was emailed to me. I was asked if the pauses are some sort of disability. No, it's not. I pause when I talk because I don't script things out. I don't want to produce videos that are slick with real high production values because survival shouldn't be commercial. Okay? I speak to you guys from the heart because I care. I, I, I hope to give you guys information that you need if you ever find yourself in a bad situation, stranded somewhere, or uh, natural disaster, tornadoes, storms, hurricanes, earthquakes, what have you, that you have the knowledge to get through it and see your loved ones again. So with that being said, I'm going on to the next video. Now today's topic I'm covering is something that most people don't think about, and that's communications. And the reason I don't think most people think about it is because everyone has one of these, a cell phone. Well, with cell phones, there's a few inherent problems, and all them inherent problems come back to one thing, reception, okay? Um, let me take a minute and explain. First of all, cell phone companies do not put towers in sparsely populated and unpopulated places. They rely on the, to uh, the towers in more populated areas to cover these areas that are sparsely populated to unpopulated. In theory, this, the way they place the towers, this would work. But in practice, it does not work because the towers are not powerful enough to reach that far and you're limited in power on your phone transceiver. Second inherent problem with cell phones and reception is weather. Sunspots can affect towers. Storms can affect the signal coming from the tower and from the phone to the tower. Um, third, if you know how cell phones run, they don't just run off towers, they run off regular phone lines. So you're on your cell phone, that signal goes from the cell phone to the tower, the, from the tower to a switching station, and is running across normal phone lines. So a normal phone line gets taken out in a, in a car wreck or a storm, it can affect cell phone reception. Towers get taken out in storms all the time. Third inherent problem with cell phone service and signal is usage. We learn after the attacks in New York, with all the people trying to make calls to their loved ones and emergency services, that the towers can only handle so much traffic before they shut down or you can't even connect to them because there's no bandwidth available for your call to be connected to the tower. So, that leaves you with a few options. And we're gonna discuss them here. First option is this. Now this ain't a Motorola, it's just a generic one that I got at Walmart for 25 bucks for two of them. This is a family radio service and general mobile radio service radio. These are limited to one watt of power, half a watt of power, because the family radio service requires that by law. Something else that is required by law that the, uh, for the family mobile radio service is no antenna. But since this is a two frequency radio, they're allowed to get by with a small antenna. The range on this is going to vary from a mile on up to possibly 20, 40, 50 miles, depending on terrain and where you're at. Your second option is a normal general mobile radio service radio only. General mobile radio service radios are allowed more power. You're allowed an antenna, and not only an, uh, allowed an antenna, you're allowed a removable antenna, so you can put a longer antenna on, which is going to greatly increase your range, and with the increase in power um, from a half watt up to, I think it's like three or five watts, um, gonna increase your range uh, greatly, again, 
depending on terrain. Another option would be a radio like this. This is a uh, handheld dual man radio. And what that means is, is UHF and VHF. So it is capable of being programmed to take the family radio service channels, the general mobile radio service, multi-use radio service channels, and business channels on one frequency. And on the other frequency, you're capable of putting uh, programming in marine channels if you live near the coast or near uh, any of the Great Lakes. And any of the ham radio channels in the 2 meter and 70 centimeter range. Um, the problem with this radio is they are not type certified for the FR, uh, fam FRS family radio service or uh, GMRS, uh, General Mobile Radio Services, because of their power output. And for the family radio service, is not only issue of power output, but the removable antenna. Still, many people program, program these frequencies in, and paintballers use them uh, in their paintball games. I'm not aware of any enforcement yet on this. I know there are... Uh, pushing and wanting to change the rules, but yeah, the licensees of these radios, every time they try, they bitch and say, hey, you know what? I paid my money to get a license, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, they get put a stop to the actual law being changed, but it's not being enforced either. So um, now with the ham radio frequencies on this, unless it is a life and death emergency, you do need a license to transmit. Another couple features this radio has that I like and I think are handy is, let me turn it on here. It picks up FM radio. So not only do you have a radio capable of transmitting and receiving for help, you also have a radio with you that picks up FM broadcast stations where you can get news and information and it also has a little flashlight on it um, not very bright not gonna light up a whole big area but if you're uh, stranded and you need to read something you're reading a map um, looking at something or even walking it's gonna light up you know four or five feet ahead of you, you can see at least where you're stepping. Um, not the greatest flashlight in the world, but if you don't have one, it's gonna serve the purpose. And it also has a blinking mode that could be used for signaling. And your third option really is a CB radio. A CB radios require no license whatsoever. You can get three, five, ten miles with a CB radio and a good antenna. So, in situations like this, let's go back to my first video. You're stranded in a blizzard. You slid off the road. You can't go nowhere. You're stuck. You get out. Uh, you got no cell phone signal. You get out your radio. You put it on the proper channel and you make a call. You may not get anybody that first day. You may not get anybody the second day, but maybe you do on the third day. Somebody heard your call for help. Between the gear you have and, uh, you know, the food and the gear you have that I recommend that everybody should have and, and keep in a bag in, in the back of their car. you're going to survive and not only have you survived you had a way to communicate the biggest part of survival is not only surviving but is facilitating your rescue and 
there'll be other tips and tricks I offer in upcoming videos that will help facilitate rescue that people don't think about that I believe should be done and I personally do and I have my family personally do. With that being said, I wish you all luck. I hope you never find yourself in a situation where the equipment I recommend and the knowledge that I give you ever have to be used. I also want to remind you on my other video I have a giveaway going if you have not seen that video yet or if you have and haven't entered please enter I want to give this package away I want to give it to somebody I want to give it to somebody give them a start or supplement what they already have with that being said I will do the third video in a couple days and discuss a new topic with you until then take care of yourself watch yourself and be careful